Hello friends! My name is Marina and this is Rapunzel Fiber Arts. So today we're going to be talking about something that's a little bit taboo in the fiber community. People don't tend to like to talk about this because I think if they feel that it reflects poorly on them that they've made a mistake and and that somehow they deserve what, what happened. And that's not the case. And that is, of course, moths. Clothes moths are something that have plagued fiber people for centuries, I'm sure, and will continue to do so. Um, if you aren't aware, clothes moths are moths that the larval stage eats wool. And this can be bad for a variety of reasons. It damages your wool. They can get into closets and destroy commercial clothing that is made out of wool. Um, and they're pesky and can decimate your fiber supply. Um, there's a reason that most of my wool is in airtight bins or bags, and that's because of moths. So. I'm usually pretty on top of it. I've had some negative experiences in the past where I've lost whole fleeces. Um, I find that clothes moths are particularly attracted to dirty raw fleeces, so they tend to gravitate towards that if you have it in your in your home. But they'll take pretty much anything. Anything wool, they'll do um, pet hair if that's accumulated in locations. They'll eat um, eat food like pantry moths do, um, if there's no wool for them to access. So they're a bit of an issue. And being proactive is definitely the best thing you can do, keeping stuff in airtight bins like this. But people are bound to make mistakes and slip up and leave something woolen lying around for moths to access. And in the environments where they exist, they often come out, at least where I live, in the springtime, um, wherever they've been hiding all winter, they come out and they begin to, to flutter around looking for wool to lay eggs on so that that larval stage has something to eat. Um, and I made a mistake. I had knit a really cute dog sweater for my dog bear and left it on top of his crate all all winter and up until now, which is now August. So it's been there for months, mostly untouched, and that is prime habitat for clothes moths. They like dark places, so they went in the folds of the fabric where no light was getting through, laid eggs, and reproduced there. So obviously this isn't great. I'm not happy about this, but it could be a lot worse. I haven't seen them fluttering around my studio. I haven't seen any activity here other than on that one dog sweater. So. Luckily, it was knit out of superwash material, so I just threw it in the washing machine, and hopefully, hopefully, um, it isn't damaged to the point where I need to mend or replace it. We'll have to wait and see. I didn't really want to poke around on it until it was clean so that I didn't have to risk getting eggs anywhere. So I took that straight downstairs and stuck it in the washing machine. And now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about clothes moths, what you can do to prevent them, what you can do if you encounter them, um, and, and how to best protect your stash. All right, friends. So before I get to that, here is the sweater in question. Um, and I am just pointing out to you a couple of spots on there where you can see moth activity. And it's this kind of whitish webbing texture that you see on the fabric. And that is the residue that the moths leave behind as they eat your wool. 
So there's a little bit more. And then there's some as well. And then if you look underneath here, we have some adult moths that after laying eggs died here. And then here are a couple of close-ups of different sections of the of the sweater so that you can really see where exactly that damage is and what it looks like. And then this next one here is actually a live larva right above my fingertip. And then here we have one of the dead adults. And then there's this kind of residue uh, that is left behind. And here I am just throwing that straight in the washing machine to wash. All right, friends. So having looked at all of the remains that I saw in the bin um, where the sweater was, I determined that I have webbing clothes moths. So usually what I see when I see clothes moths fluttering around in the spring, which is just when they find their way into the house, it's I try not to panic when I see them because everything is in plastic storage, so it's fairly safe, but there is a part of me that sees clothes moths fluttering around and has a little bit of a panic attack. So I try, I try to remain calm. It's just fiber, it's not the end of the world, but I do what I can to keep it safe. Um, there are two types of clothes moths. There's webbing and case bearing. These are differentiated by the color of the adults. So case bearing are kind of brown and lighter striped and webbing clothes moths are like a light tan. Um, so you saw the adult clothes moths in the pictures that I shared, and those are more tan colored and uniform in color. So there's only one there striped. And then the other way you can tell them apart is by looking at the remains the larvae leave behind. So in my situation, it was webbing because it was that like whitish webbed, uh, whitish texture. And that's the, the webbing that they create to hide underneath because they just want to stay where they are, eat wool, and develop into their adult form so that they can go and reproduce. Um, whereas case-bearing clothes moth larvae create a little case that they actually crawl inside and hide there. Um, the best way to keep your stash safe is with prevention. If you have yarn or spinning fiber out on a bookshelf. It's very aesthetic, but it's a bit of a disaster waiting to happen. You could very easily lose your stash that way. Um, I've, I've lost whole fleeces. I've lost, I've lost enough that I put everything in plastic now. And the reason that I do that is because moths can't get through this gasketed plastic bin. There's, it's airtight, so bugs aren't able to climb in like, like um, these ones up here are not gasketed, um, so they can get into the bin, but everything in those bins is in airtight plastic bags, so it's, it's safe. Um, I've heard people say that paper bags and um, pillowcases can also be used to, to store fiber. I wouldn't recommend that. I've definitely had moths get into paper bags, which typically aren't airtight, so I don't know how that would work anyway. Um, and I haven't tried using pillowcases before, but they're very small bugs, so I I could see them being able to squeeze in and and find their way to your fiber regardless. Plus, because that's not airtight, the scent and the, the smell of the wool is able to escape and that attracts the adults who then lay the eggs and then the larvae eat the wool. So 
I wouldn't trust either of those. I prefer plastic. It's not the most eco-friendly, but especially with these bins that I use, you can reuse them and reuse them. Um, so it's a bit of an investment, but it's worth it. And then these will last me as long as I continue using fiber. Um, I don't think I'm going to break these bins anytime soon. They're pretty durable. It's also helpful if you want to monitor your moth situation to use moth traps. You want to make sure that you have a brand that works for clothes moths, preferably both types, because I believe they use different pheromones for each. And you want to replace those every one to three months, depending on how bad your situation is. Um, so I have about four or five scattered around my house, and I try to replace those every three months. Those only attract the male clothes moths. The females aren't attracted because they use the pheromone that the females use to attract the males to the traps, and it's like a glue trap, so they just get stuck there and then die. Um, so it's a good way to monitor if you have a situation, how bad it is, and it's also good to, like, prevent those males from finding eggs that they can then fertilize and create larvae. So in addition to that, you can also use some natural moth deterrents like herbs. Uh, lavender and cedar are particularly good for keeping moths away. I use a mixture of a bunch of different stuff that I keep in each of my bins. Um, and I bought that from my friend Rachel over at Spotted Sheep Studio. Um, she doesn't currently have her shop up, but if you contact her, maybe you can get some of her sachets. Um, I think I bought 30 or 40 of them when she was selling them and just have been continuing to use those. Um, because they're in the airtight bins, they're going to last a little bit longer than if they were just out. But I should probably replace those soon as well. So say you've done all of this, but you still come across moths. What do you do? If they're on something, you need to determine whether or not it's salvageable because the moth larvae eat the wool. So if they're on yarn or fiber, they're actually going to um, diminish the quality of it by making the fibers weaker or actually eating through a section of yarn so that there's a break in it. So determine if it's worth trying to salvage or if you just throw it out in your garage or outside so that it doesn't um, continue to infest your fiber stash. If it is worth saving, there are a couple of things you can do. The main things that are like accessible because you can like use chemical smoke to get them gone, but stuff that's more accessible to um, the traditional hand spinner would be using your oven or using your freezer. So pretty much extreme temperatures can kill them, but there are a couple things to keep in mind with this. First of all, when you're using extreme heat in your oven, you don't want to bake plastics, which, is, which includes, includes acrylic, and you don't want to bake raw wool because the lanolin on the fiber will ruin the fiber if you bake it. Um, I haven't ever done this, so I don't know exactly what happens, but the lanolin will ruin the fiber and you won't be able to use it anymore. So if you do decide to bake and you don't you're not dealing with acrylic or raw fleece, you want to heat your oven to 170 degrees, which is about as low as ovens go, and then put your wool in like on a baking sheet. Bake it for 20 to 30 minutes or until it's heated through. So if you're baking really dense combed top, it's probably going to take longer, or if you're doing yarn, it'll take longer than like a cloud of fiber. So keep that in mind. When I bake skeins of yarn, I um, unskein them and open them out so that they're, there's more, they're not quite as dense. 
Um, and I like to do that when I buy commercial yarn because I don't always know where it's coming from and the situation that it came from and I don't want to accidentally introduce moths into my stash. If you decide to freeze, you need to freeze twice. So freezing only kills adults and larvae, it doesn't kill eggs. So if you freeze, you've got to freeze for like two days to kill the adults and larvae, take it out for about 10 days, which is how long it takes for the eggs to hatch, and then freeze it again. And that should kill all your larvae. Um, I would still be cautious with this because depending on how cold your freezer gets, it might be an issue. Um, this is also obviously, um, a space issue for a lot of people. Unless you have an empty chest freezer lying around, it's going to be difficult to find space for this for a lot of people. So keep that in mind as well. One other thing you might hear about are mothballs. I wouldn't recommend using them. They're soaked in chemicals and they will impart a negative smell onto your fiber that is not ideal. So I would steer clear of mothballs, but baking and freezing are both good techniques. Um... All right, friends, I need to give you an update on this because as you might be able to see, we have a hole in fact, we have two holes, and I think what happened is that some of that moth activity um, weakened the threads here, and it broke, resulting in this, this hole um, and dropping stitches and them falling all the way back to here. And what I think I'm going to do is just toss this. Um, I could frog back and then re-knit it, but I, I don't care enough to do that. My dog doesn't wear this very much. It, I don't think it's worth it. So this is going to go in the garbage, um, which is a little bit sad, but it is what it is. All right, friends. So I have the sweater in question secure in a Ziploc bag. This has been washed on like a sterilized cycle in my washing machine, like the hottest, most aggressive wash cycle that my machine has. And as you saw in the last clip, there was some damage. Um, I think what happened is some moths ate at that yarn badly enough that when it went through that rough wash cycle, it broke and started to unravel. So I am going to let this sit in timeout for a little while. I don't really want to touch it right now, but I'm going to give it some time and probably go back and re-knit that ribbing and the very bottom of the sweater because that's the last part that I knit. So I'm probably just going to frog it and use leftovers of the same yarn to finish it unless I see moth activity and then I'm probably just going to throw it away because it's not worth the trouble. Um, I don't want to risk getting more moth stuff in my stash, which is why this is currently in a plastic bag because it's in my studio and I don't want anything spreading. So I think that's going to be it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative. Um, and hopefully you can implement some of the stuff that you've learned and protect your stash and your finished objects so that you don't have the same problem that I came across today. So I hope you take care, friends. If you liked this video, feel free to like, subscribe, or comment. Let me know what you think. Should I just throw this away or should I give it another shot since it is color work and I did put a lot of work into it? Um, and I will talk to you again soon. Bye, friends.